What's going on everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is gonna be a how-to video on installing the Honda Accessory Transmission Cooler Kit for the 2016 to 2020 Honda Pilots. This is with the six-speed transmission. You can get this kit on Amazon. I'm going to leave the link in the description. You can get transmission fluid there also. All the links will be in the description for you guys to buy. This should be a pretty simple project. If you guys have watched my trailer hitch videos, you can install this transmission cooler so you can get 5,000 pound towing capacity out of your Honda Pilot. This is going to be a complete how-to video step-by-step, step, so it may be a little bit long, so feel free to skip around if you need to get to a certain part of the video. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do it so you can follow along and not get too overwhelmed. This is the 2016 Honda Pilot. Like I said, this is for 2016 to 2020 Honda Pilots with the six speed transmission. This is what comes in the kit besides the transmission fluid right there. This is the part number for the kit. Like I said, I will leave the link in the description so you can get that from Amazon. In the kit, we have the transmission cooler right here. We have a couple hoses right here that will go to the transmission. It comes with four clamps. It comes with the bolts to bolt everything together. And then it also comes with the sticker that says you can tow 5,000 pounds that you can put on your trailer hitch. This is the OEM Honda transmission fluid right here for the six speed. I bought four quarts of that. I'm gonna make sure that this is full when I put the oil cooler on and then I figured I'd have some left over just in case I needed it. You are not gonna need four quarts of this to put on the transmission cooler, but I figured it would be nice to have some around. I will let you know how much I actually use, you know, when I get to that point in the video. So that's what comes in the kit right here. And like I said, that's the part number right there for this kit. You are gonna have to go underneath this car. So, as you can see, this is already up in the air. You guys need to crawl underneath this. I'm doing this in a garage right here, but you can do this in your driveway, no problem. I have it up on jack stands. You guys just wanna make sure that you are being safe and cautious when jacking up the car and putting on jack stands. All right, so first things going on underneath, we want to fold this flap down right here. This is attached to the bumper, but we need to fold this down to get up and we need to take this splash shield off there are a couple 10 millimeter bolts and some clips. These clips might break depending on where you live and if there's dirt and sand. Honda is not good with their clips. They break a lot. So just be aware. I can leave links in the description for these clips if you need those also. This one right here in the back is a Phillips head also on the back corners. So I'm gonna get a 10 millimeter and I'm gonna start taking this stuff down. For these four 10 millimeter bolts on the bumper, they are the ones with the shoulder bolts. Hondas are known to get rusty. So these are pretty rusty. They were tough coming out. You wanna make sure that you do not break them. Um, go nice and easy. So I got the splash shield out right now. Here is all the bolts and screws and everything for it. All the clips came out just fine. These clips are to the bumper and these clips are for the cradle. Honda did a couple stupid things on this. So depending on where you live, I live in Massachusetts where things do get rusty and these Hondas are horrible to work on. And I see this on you know every Honda that has this sort of style bumper you know, up here in New England is that they put these bolts right here into the plastic shield. And what happens is that these two rust together and it rips the shield. And that's basically what happened on this one. Um, and then I'm gonna show you that in a second. And the other thing is, is that these Phillip head screws is a dumb idea too, because you will strip out the top and then you won't be able to get them out. This is the one that's by the oil filter, which has oil on it. So this one came out fine. This one did not, but there's enough room that you can put a vice grip on it. It's not that the bolt is rusted in. It's just that it's rusted in stronger than the Phillips head. So I put a vice grip on it, got it loose, and then I could take it out the rest of the way. 
the good thing is is that these are standard size six millimeter threads so if you take these out i would highly suggest putting in a regular bolt like that with a 10 millimeter head because then you'll be you'll be able to get them in and out easily um more easily than dealing with these again so that's probably what i'm going to do with this vehicle with the splash shield problems this is what it looks like this is where the retainer goes and then when it's too rusty it turns and it rips the splash shield and then um, you have to be able to get a pair of vice grips in there to take it off essentially this is broken what i'm going to do is put the retainer on this part right here and then put the bolt through um, this is not going to go anywhere there's another bolt right here um, you know it's clipped in to the bumper also so it's not going to go anywhere but on both sides it did the same thing every uh, bumper we take off at work with hondas is the same way um, it's just a very poor design by them to do it that way they could have just put a plastic clip in there and not a bolt but either way the splash shield is out of the way now um and the next step is to get this shield off that's right up in here underneath the bumper there are four 10 millimeter bolts to take that out um so i'm gonna get those out now once again depending on where you live they might be a little rusty in here um, you don't want to break them off so go easy i can see that this one is rusty already um, the two on the end so i'm going to be careful and hopefully these will come off just fine on each side of this air dam right here there's also there's also four clips two on each side so this is all loose just got to take these out all right so that shield is out now it was a little bit of a struggle to get these out because you don't really have that much room but these are the easier honda clips to remove so four bolts these could be rusty four clips two on each side and then that will come out and now you can see up into behind this grill where you want to bolt the new transmission cooler now you can see that there's room up in here where you're going to bolt the new transmission cooler um some people do take this grill out so you can bolt in the transmission cooler there's a lot of clips that go all around the side of it i'm gonna leave this in i think it'll be easier just to leave this in and um you know bolt it up there kind of blind but um i do feel that it'll be easier than taking that out so now it's time to bolt in the actual transmission cooler there are three bolts for this one two three they are the three longer black ones that come with the kit and it's going to be kind of hard to show you guys um, where this bolts to but these two bolts are going to bolt onto the center beam that runs up and down in front of the radiator you can see that one um, bolt hole down there um, through the grill right now that's where the lower one's going to bolt there's another one you know right above it and then on and then right there on the bottom of the radius sport is where this lower one is going to bolt right there um you know the rusty one that didn't have a bolt in it so i'm going to try to get my camera in there while i try to bolt that up but obviously with the front bumper on it is going to be kind of hard um but that's where it's going to go it should be able to go in nice and easy no big deal all right there was no way i could record that while i put that in but the transmission cooler is in now um like i said this one bolt is on the bottom of this radius support and then this lower bolt is on the middle bracket right here and there was another one on the top um, pretty easy to do easy to get to um, just no way to record in here while i was doing that um, Honda did no favors by leaving this flap on the bumper without this there it would be a lot easier um, but it is no big deal I did loosen up this bolt right here just um, to get some movement to get this bolt in so you might need to lo loosen that up also the transmission cooler is in and the lines come out right here they're gonna go through this hole in um, that Honda left in this um, shield right here so the next step is to 
get the lines in that came with the kit. There's one bolt for that. So I'm gonna put that in and then show you where that goes. This is where the new transmission lines bolt to. Right here, this is the bolt that's supplied in the kit. There's a hole right there um, that you can put this right in um, exactly where it's supposed to go. You can see that the lines go right to the lines for the oil cooler right here. So at this point, you can take the clamps, slide them over the hoses and connect both of these. It's not gonna matter which one you go to, but as you can see, you know, this one is more natural to that and that is, and that one to there. So um, you can go ahead and put the clamps over the hoses and then slide them on and then tighten the clamps. These style clamps are locked open right now. So you can easily slide them on. Then you just have to pry on this part right here and it'll automatically lock. So this is what it looks like when they're clamped on just like that. And like I said, it is bolted right there. And then the lines come back through the radius support and the hoses come up to the transmission. So this is the last step of putting this on. You're gonna remove this hose that comes from the transmission filter to the transmission. The top hose that we just put on from the kit is gonna go to the top where the transmission is. And then the lower hose is gonna go right into the filter. So you wanna squeeze the two clamps, take this hose off, and then you want to put on the supplied clamps that came with the kit onto the hoses, put them on each side, and then clamp it down. All right, so it's all in now. Um, you do want to remove and put the new hoses on quickly. It did drip some transmission fluid. The longer you let it sit there, the more it's gonna drip, but there will be a little bit that does come out. So you wanna be you know, aware of that so it's not dripping on you. But that's all in. Everything is um, you know clamped up, put in, bolted in, tightened and all that stuff. Now you just wanna go along and make sure that all the clamps are good tight um, you don't have any issues all the hoses are pushed on correctly um, you know and um, pushed on to the length that they're supposed to be this one's all set um, and now you just have to put on everything you took off which shouldn't take that long there's really not much to install the first thing is that shield that um, we took out that's up there you know, four bolts on the raised sport and the four clips, two on each side, and then the splash shield, um, the under shield that we did. So really that's all. Um, I already showed you guys where all the bolts are for that. So really put that back in, button all that up, and um, you should be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then we'll start it up and check the fluid. All right, so we now have everything all buttoned up and we need to check the fluid. I've already started the car and ran it. The transmission dipstick is way down here. Um, if I go back, you can kind of see where it is in relation to the engine. But way down here, if I can put that flashlight right there, right here, there is a dipstick. If you pull it out, it is completely dry like i said i have already started this um to get the fluid going through the cooler so so like i said it is dry after starting it so it will need some fluid after it sucked the fluid through the new lines and into the cooler um, i have seen other people online say that they didn't need to add any transmission fluid so maybe depending on how many miles you have or if it's been serviced lately or whatever, maybe you don't need any, but this one definitely does. To get fluid in, into that, you're gonna need a long neck funnel or something to get the um, fluid down in there. So I will put a link to one off Amazon that um, you guys can buy if you need one, but obviously you're not gonna be able to just pour the fluid down there. I also got this um, fluid off Amazon, like I already said. So the link for this will be down in the description. Also, this is for the six speed transmission. This is, this whole video is for the 2016 to 2020 six speed Honda Pilot. So if you do have a nine speed, then I would not pay attention to all this because some stuff will be different. 
I'm going to add in at least half a quart right now and then check. I don't want to overfill it, so I'm going to go a little bit at a time. I really could not find any information from Honda about the capacity with the um, transmission cooler, so I'm just guessing. So I'm going to do a half a quart at a time and then, um, you know, double check the dipstick each time until we get there. And then I will let you know exactly how much I put in. All right, so I just checked the fluid. I went for a drive, got the uh, transmission nice and hot, get all the fluids going. I did put in almost a quart and a half of fluid into the transmission. This might vary between, you know, every car. So don't just put a quart and a half in yours because I did. Um, but I did put in a quart and a half into this car and um, I'm gonna check again in a week after we drive it around for a while and get it to cycle and all that stuff. But that's pretty much the end of the video. Like I said, this is for a 2016 to 2020 Honda Pilot six speed transmission cooler install. This is an OEM part. You can buy the part right on Amazon. I'm gonna leave the link in the description for that, for the fluid, for anything else that I use. You guys can find all those links down there and you can buy them. You can have them uh, at your house pretty soon. If you guys need to watch trailer harness videos or trailer hitch videos for this Honda Pilot, I do have those. I will have those links. A lot of people doing the videos about putting trailer hitches on want to look this up also. So I'm gonna put all of those links all together so everybody can find them, watch them, give me a like, give me a subscribe. Check out those links, buy the products in the description. It'll cost nothing for you, but it'll help me out for sure. So I appreciate it. If you guys have any questions about the install or anything else, if you guys want any other videos with this Honda Pilot, just let me know. I'll make sure I can do something for you. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.